chief political correspondent at The Times, Aubrey Allegretti. Thank you all for being here. Why don't we start with Aubrey? Aubrey, um, this is just so thuddingly predictable, isn't it? We've had it happen before. How could anyone have thought it wasn't going to happen again? This was very predictable, yes. The, the House of Lords effectively uh, reinserted seven amendments, watering back down the Rwanda bill, and this sends it back to the Commons. What I think was less expected was for the government then to be seemingly dragging its feet in terms of trying to take these amendments back out again once it gets to the House of Commons. Because we heard today from Penny Morden, who's the leader of the House of Commons, and effectively announces the business in the House of Commons chamber and what MPs are going to vote on when, that this legislation uh, now isn't going to be voted on again by MPs until at least the 15th of April. Now, people might be slightly baffled by that, considering that there are still a few days left of Parliament before it sort of breaks for Easter. MPs are supposed to be here all the way until next Tuesday. And you will remember as well that when the Supreme Court struck down the Rwanda plan in the first place, in the middle of last November, the government promised emergency legislation. Well, here we are, four months hence, and nearly two years on from the moment Priti Patel signed the original deal, and we still haven't got flights in the air, putting at risk Rishi Sunak's pledge to be able to deliver that by spring this year. Alicia, I mean, this was inevitable, really, wasn't it? And how could anyone have not thought so? And if the Prime Minister knew it was inevitable, why are we in this position? Well, I mean, Aubrey is absolutely right in saying it doesn't really scream emergency legislation when it's going to be delayed yet again until potentially after Easter. I mean, this has been going along for a really long time now. And now what we've seen yesterday is just a further delay to this policy, which seems to be falling at so many obstacles repeatedly again and again. Mm. So what happens now? It goes back to the House of Commons. They basically decide whether or not those Lords amendments are what they want added to the bill. Chances are they probably won't want them added to the bill as well. Let's remember that. And then we're just going to be in this phase where they basically have to find a compromise for the wording they want on this legislation until it can become law. Let's also remember that there's a chance as well that even if it does become law, there are other logistical issues with it as well to see whether or not actually these flights will take off. But some people are arguing that actually the reason that the government did delay it until after Easter is so they can kind of have a bit more time to nail all of the other issues with it down before it does become legislation. So that could be a bit of a hint as to why they made that decision yesterday. Um, and also, Vanessa, they don't actually have very much on the legislative agenda. It's the kind of the unspoken open secret of Westminster says the government has completely run out of steam and it doesn't have any major legislation in the pipeline. People say it's the emptiest parliament has been in their political lifetimes. And so you know, it could just be that the government doesn't have anything in the, in the pipeline. And so, you know, it kind of it's quite convenient you know, just to keep um, kicking the can down the road and sort of running down the clock until the election. But I think also, Vanessa, we have to bear in mind what the amendments are that the government, that the Lords has just voted for. Well, I've just these, run through a few right, of them. Right, these are... One of them, you know, that Rwanda is a safe country. That is the thing that the Supreme Court ruled that it was not, isn't it? Our own Supreme right. Court, the highest uh, seat of justice in the land, said it is not a safe country, so you can't send people there. And, and, and here's the Lords quite rightly, you might say, resurrecting this objection, which is pretty pivotal. You can't send people to somewhere that they're not going to be safe. So how is that ever going to be ironed out? How is the government ever going to make that look as if it doesn't exist? Well, you have, you know, some difference of political options. Either the Lords eventually sort of bows the Commons' will, which is what happens in the past. The Lords sort of makes its... It's, it's opinion and then the, the Commons eventually sort of force it through. Mm -hmm. The Lords could actually sort of remain defiant on this. It's not a manifesto commitment. That's really the only convention uh, whereby the Lords doesn't uh, vote down completely mm -hmm. um, Commons legislation, uh, in which case the government would have to uh, enforce the Parliament Act, but they'd have to wait until uh, a change of Parliament and uh, there's no time for that. So actually the Lords does have options. I think it's really important for viewers and listeners to know what are the amendments, because there are a couple of really crucial ones. There's one that simply says that uh, they need reassurances that Rwanda is a safe country, i.e. it's in the treaty provisions. That was, as you just said, the Supreme Court has stated that Rwanda is not a safe country. And so what the, what the Parliament has now, what the Commons has now done, is said, well, actually, we're saying it is a safe country. 
Uh, so you're, I'm saying this table is black, mm -hmm. but no, I'm going to make a new law now that actually says it's red. Mm -hmm. And now we all have to say it's red. It's like a fiction. It's a complete fiction. And understandably, people are quite concerned about that. You can override any kind of court judgment by simply saying the court, what we what the court has established, we're going to make a law that says the court is wrong. Yes. So that's that's not that's not in keeping with the separation of powers. So let me let me bring Aubrey in because I just want you, Aubrey, to establish whether you think that Jonathan Liss is overstating this, that he's saying that you know they're taking what 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 the Supreme Court has said and saying we're now going to change the law so the Supreme Court is no longer right, it's now wrong, and that that is just effectively weaving a work of fiction. And I think we should discuss this, and your answer should come, in the light of the information that's been made available only about half an hour ago, which is that yesterday more people crossed over to this country on small boats. I think it was 513, more than on any other day Previously, the weather was nice yesterday. Obviously, the sea was calm and more people arrived than we've ever had in one single day before. So in the light of that, what what is your response to what Jonathan's saying? Just in case people listening or watching are thinking, well, he's overstating it. He's really, you know, he's making a big old deal of it. Is he or isn't he, Aubrey? Well, it's not a view just espoused by people on the left. It is also a view uh, espoused by people like Ken Clark a former Conservative cabinet minister, uh, including a former chancellor. Mm. And he gave a very lengthy speech in the House of Lords not too long ago, where he made a very similar argument. He said, you know, some things we cannot argue are white if we know them to be black. Uh, there are immutable truths in this world. And so there is, um, I suppose, a difference to how this issue is being handled in the House of Lords, the different issues where sometimes peers do sort of back down you know, they're meant to be a sort of backstop to say to the House of Commons, are you sure, have you thought about this? Here are some suggestions. But then they do tend to sort of get out of the way if the MPs do express their will. And in this instance, because there are such sort of profound moral and constitutional objections by some peers, including crossbenchers and conservatives as well, let's not forget that, um, you know, they, they make up a very big part of the amount of peers altogether. Those are the people that also have concerns. It's not just about the Labour Party trying to block this. But as you said, it is going to become more pertinent an issue because, as we saw yesterday, the highest daily number of arrivals on small boats occurred. We're now, I think, at around 10% more of arrivals than we were this time last year. Now, the government will say that's still down on what it was over the last few years. But Rishi Sidnak is really in a bind if he wants to deliver on his promise to get flights away by the spring. So, Alicia, so much for stop the small boats, and then you're standing on a podium with a sign saying, stop them more people than ever before in one day yesterday. Definitely. And, and the thing is, is the government have really put so much focus on stopping illegal migration that they're kind of in too deep now to really, really go back on this. I mean, this is the policy that Rishi Sunak has kind of nailed his whole premiership to. His whole leadership has been based on this one policy. So to kind of dip out now and maybe, you know, reevaluate things or actually choose to kind of put emphasis on something else, it is kind of too late for him to do that. He really kind of just needs to make this work somehow. OK, let's make this discussion veer slightly off course, just because because you have said, and, and, and I mean, it, it seems to me that the way every word you say is crystal clear and absolutely, obviously, apparently, absolutely true. You know, Rishi Sunak has nailed his colours to a particular mast. That mast is stop the small boats. He hasn't stopped them. We know he hasn't because yesterday more people arrived than ever before. Plus the Rwandan solution, nobody's gone anywhere. It's been an absolutely catastrophically expensive, so far, waste of space. Who knows what might happen, but so far an absolute waste of space. Right, Keir Starmer hasn't, it seems to me at any rate, please correct me if I'm wrong or if you disagree, that's fine, hasn't really nailed his colours to any mast at all. He stayed absolutely ineffably vague about anything and everything, so you don't really know what he thinks, what he's going to try to do, what changes he's going to make. You know he's not really keen on the Rwandan solution, but you don't know what else he has in mind. You know he's not keen on lots of things, but you're not sure, apart from possibly really taking away the charitable status of private schools, you're not really sure what he's thinking of doing about anything. But my question for all three of you political pundits is this, is that terrifically wise of him? He hasn't got Ed Miliband's tablet of stone in which he said what he's going to do and what he's going to do. He's really said absolutely nothing at all. Alicia, was this, was this very, very clever? Is this 
politicking at its best. Well, first of all, I just say, careful, he might hear you. Yeah, I know um, he's in the building somewhere. <laughs> I hope he does hear me. That's why I'm saying especially loudly. I want him to run in through the door and tell me it's not That'd true. That'd be fun. Unless you're wrong, you're maligning me. I've got all kinds of policies and all sorts of things I'm absolutely ready to do right up my sleeve. Well, let's just remind people what his plans are for illegal migration. So, so far, the emphasis for the Labour Party has been very much on tackling the criminal gangs. The trouble is, and there's something that lots of the public have said, is how do you tackle the criminal gangs? It's a really, really sophisticated operation, hence why it's so successful. So to say you're going to tackle it is really going to be a really, really big task. Yeah. Secondly, more recently, he said that he wants to put some focus on employers who are illegally, knowingly employing illegal migrants into their businesses and therefore kind of protecting them with some kind of um, shelter there and obviously providing them with, with money. Um, and he said that he wants to sort out that. But as you say, mm -hmm. and he, oh, sorry, also he's also wants to create um, better returns agreements and better relationships with European countries mm -hmm. to try and stop um, migrants coming along their journey before they reach the UK. So those are three things. Lots of people will say that that isn't really enough. The thing is that the Rwanda policy does is it's a catchphrase. Mm -hmm. It's easy for people to say, the, the government wants to, you know, send people to Rwanda. It's not so easy to say, well, the Labour Party wants to have closer ties with the EU. They want to do this with employers. They want to do this. It, it doesn't have a kind of policy ring to it. And I think that's what people... All are right. I want one short line from Jonathan. Is he wise not to say what he wants to do or how he's going to do it? Look, he's 25 points ahead in the polls at the moment. He doesn't actually need uh, to sort of to, to do what Alicia is saying. Mm -hmm. He's sitting back and watching his enemy making mistakes. And my God, is the enemy, is the enemy making mistakes right now? Aubrey, or final line on Keir Starmer, whether he should or shouldn't at least have a policy or two? Well, I think Labour would argue that they have uh, suggested that, for example, migrants be allowed to be processed by UK customs officials in France to be able to... Uh, stop asylum seekers needing to come to the UK in order to claim asylum. And again, there seems to be this criticism that Labour leader Keir Starmer sort of stood for nothing. And then the Conservatives made great hay out of the fact that he had pledged this £28 billion green investment plan. I mean, that sounded quite ambitious and he did junk it because obviously he said he wouldn't be able to afford it necessarily anymore. But um, I think, again, Keir Starmer's playing it safe and it doesn't seem to be hurting him in the polls.